Hello, welcome to Around Town with Rotary. My name is Mike Harrington, one of the hosts of today's show. This is a monthly show that we, we produce to really give everyone a chance at home to, to, to meet some of the interesting people of the Beverly Rotary Club and some of the projects we work on around town. I'm joined today by my co-host, Al Temkin, and we also have a very special guest, and Al will introduce our guest. Al, take it away. Thank you, Mike. Yes, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, fellow Rotarian and uh, all-around business person in the real estate business, Linda Turcott. So we really appreciate you joining us today, Linda. So well, appreciate that. I know you're a busy lady. So. Thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate oh, it's it. It's absolutely pleasure. our pleasure. And so we're going to get into a bunch of things with you, um, but we'd like to start at the kind of the beginning and tell us a little bit about your, your family and, and what's happening with all of that and where you're living right now. Those kinds of things, please. Okay. Well, I was born and raised in Beverly, and I lived in Beverly most of my life, actually. Um, I'm one of six children, next to the youngest, and I have nine nieces and nephews, and a great nephew and a great niece. And I believe you know my niece, Nicole. She's the yes. director at uh, Mrs. A's. Yep. So, um, I, like I said, I lived in Beverly most of my life, and I moved to Danvers back in 2011. And the only reason I made the move was, at the time, my mom was probably about 86. She, has, she had her own home. She was living alone, and it was time that she move in with someone. So we actually ended up selling both our houses and moved to Danvers was quite traumatic for her. I'll bet. I'll she bet. was a life lifelong Beverly resident, so to move her out of Beverly was a uh, big change. A big huge change. change. So we so um, did you went through the Beverly school system? I sure did. Yeah, I was is, graduated from the school that used to be on this site. Right. <laughs> Beverly right. High School. Um, and what did you do after that? Did you go to school after that? So much to my dad's disappointment, mm -hmm. I did not go to college. He wanted me to go, um, but I wanted to get out in, in the world and start working and earning a living. So I started out my career at Salem Five and I worked my way up through the ranks and when I left after eight years I was branch manager. And I have to say that was a great opportunity for me and a great learning experience working at the bank. The president at the time was um, Bill Mitchelson and he brought in a culture of sales which the bank did not have prior to that and that was, that was revolutionary revolutionary I think back in those days um, so I did learn a lot because I had responsibility not only for the operation of the branch but I had sales responsibility and had to bring a new business so that was a that was a great Terrific. great opportunity for me well hey we know you're involved in real estate now we're gonna spend quite a bit of time today talking about your real estate career but I know you had a number of different you know positions prior to get into real estate could you just maybe walk us through some of the different jobs you've held over the way along so the way? After as I said, I started out with Salem Five, and I left the bank, I forget what year it was, but I left to um, go work for a company that provided the information technology services to the banks. So I started out with a local company out of Boston, and a month after I started, they were acquired by a company out of Dallas, Texas. And so over my 28-year career um, at the company, there was actually five different companies due to acquisitions, mergers, spinoffs. Um, but it was a, great, it was a great, great time working there because I was a remote employee. Um, I was an account manager and responsible for clients in the New England, New York, and New Jersey um, territories. So, and then b having the company based out of Dallas and then eventually out of Orlando, Florida, I got to meet a lot of people across the country and I'm still friends with a lot of those folks today. As a matter of fact, Keller Williams had their annual um, family reunion conference in Orlando this year and I was able to connect with some of my former um, colleagues oh, cool. and it was great to oh, see great. them. Cool, cool. So you mentioned Keller Williams. Um, so this is a great point to kind of transition. T tell us if you would how you transitioned to real estate and kind of when that began. So my late sister-in-law was actually an agent with Keller Williams. Um, and my two brothers, I forgot about that. My two brothers were part-time real estate agents. And it was just something that always fascinated me. But I had a full-time job. I had benefits. Um, so it was kind of a scary thing to make that transition over to being a real estate agent and self-employed, no benefits, but I kind of got disillusioned with my position um, in the corporate world when I was age 60, so I made the leap and left the corporate world and 
joined Keller Williams. And I, I will have to say, Keller Williams, the reason I joined partly was because of my late sister-in-law. Um, she was, like I said, she was um, an agent with Keller Williams. But I went to Keller Williams because of the education they provide and the culture. This is similar to what Rotary does. They're, they're, Rotary is a service organization, but Keller Williams um, gives back to their communities that they serve as well. So that was part of the attraction for me. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, do you um, focus on a particular end of the business, residential, commercial, some combination of that? No, or? I'm just strictly residential, but um, I decided three years ago to get my license in New Hampshire. So I primarily, I, I would prefer to stay on the North Shore, but given the way the market has been, I had to expand my territory because buyers were getting outpriced in this area. And, and, and it wasn't just to go to northern Massachusetts. I actually felt, found people were looking for homes in southern New Hampshire. So I got my real estate license in New Hampshire back in 2019, I believe. And then last December, I got my license in Maine. So I'm serving North Shore, northern Massachusetts, and the southern border towns of Maine and New Hampshire. Are you finding the, the markets in Maine and New Hampshire different than the market in Massachusetts? Um, it's, it's actually similar, but it's not as competitive, and the prices are more reasonable, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's still that multiple offer situation. But I've had, I, I would say probably half my business was in New Hampshire last year. Wow. Well, and you are focusing on residential, I think you said. Residential, yeah. yes. Commercial yeah. is a totally different animal. Yeah. So. And I would think also that with the increase in interest rates now, that's going to reduce some of that pressure on uh, that many offers on a particular property. Absolutely. I would guess. Yeah. Um, we have seen the inventory has slowly been increasing week over week, but that along with the interest rates going up, and you know we've been told that the rates are going to go up so many times this year. Right. So um, it is either eliminating folks from being able to purchase a home or it's reducing their buying power. For sure. For sure, absolutely, yeah. Yes, we have um, one of the lenders that we, we work with had come in and done a presentation, and he, he told us last week, if you had a buyer that had pre-approval from the week before, you need to get a new one. Right. Because it, things have changed that quickly. Yeah. Even from the beginning of the year, if you look at what interest rates were at in January as compared to now, yeah. it's the, the monthly payment increases are incredible. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Linda. Hold on one quick second uh, to our viewing audience. We are going to take uh, a very quick break. I'd like you to watch this video to learn a little bit more about the Beverly Rotary Club and some of the great things that we get involved with for the betterment of the community. We raise a lot of money for Beverly organizations. And they bought us our refrigerated van. They made a significant contribution to the restoration of Ellis Square. They helped us house a family experiencing homelessness. They bought us our bookmobile. They were actually the first ones to donate instruments to the high school band. They bought oxygen masks for our rescue dogs. They help buy our school bus. They fund the annual Brad Gage ice cream social at Lynch Park every summer, and they even scoop the ice cream. Since 2014, they've supported the Cabot, funding preservation of this historic gem. They helped to fund the Council on Aging Van. They were a major donor to our new infant toddler playground. They bought an emergency generator for Harbor Lighthouse. We funded and built the gazebo. And we've got a green thumb. A lot of green thumbs. A lot of green thumbs. Not to mention sculptures. We planted more than a hundred trees last year. They donated a shuttle bus stop that brings veterans to the VA hospital in Bedford. We're going to buy a water drone to clean plastics out of Beverly Harbor. They make a big difference for United Way. We give up to eight scholarships. Eight scholarships every year since the mid-1980s. And I was a recipient, and thanks to their help, I was the first in my family to go to college. It's more than just a local organization. There are 33,000 clubs in 200 countries with 1.2 million members worldwide. All that good adds up. Those do-gooders just keep doing good. We funded 13 wells in Kisumu, Kenya, bringing water to 13 schools. We contributed to Kalusha School in Pakistan, and later to the construction of a fabulous women's college. Hi, I'm Izzy Pulido. I'm Mirabella Pulido. I'm Drew Pulido. And we're all of youth exchange students. We started the youth exchange program 13 years ago. 
partly because I was also an exchange student in 1979. I'm Aku. I'm from Finland. They hosted me as an exchange student. We funded Dr. Gordon Sato of Hamilton, who devised a way to grow trees in salt water in Senegal, Mauritania, and Eritrea. Our club has funded at least 20 life-changing surgeries around the world. And we've participated as non-medical volunteers in the Philippines, in Bolivia, and Venezuela. And remember, since launching the Polio Plus campaign over 30 years ago, the number of polio cases worldwide has dropped 99%. In 2019, clubs in the district joined the polar plunge to eradicate polio. The club's raised $90,000. Can we get back to Beverly, please? Over the past 10 years, we've raised, oh, I don't know, probably about $100,000. Try $400,000. Over the past 10 years, we've raised over $1 million. I have made some wonderful friends. It's downright inspiring. It's an important part of my week. It's a very important part of my week. Sometimes it's the best part of my week. It's one of the best things I do. Even if people still ask about the secret handshake. Welcome back to Around Town with Rotary. Again, our special guest here today is Linda Turcott. Linda is a local realtor with Keller Williams, uh, and she was telling us a little bit about her, her career in real estate here in recent years, and nice to have you back with us. Thank you. And Linda, tell us a little bit about, um, I understand you've, made, you've won some awards along the way. You've been a very realtor, you've been a very busy realtor, you've been a very accomplished realtor. Tell us a little bit of some of the awards you've won along the way as a realtor. Thank you. Um, actually, so I, I started in real estate in 2016, and I'm a member of the North Shore Realtors Asso Association. I always trouble with that word. Um, so in 2017, I won the Rookie of the Year Award. That was very surprising. I was told I was nominated for a different award, and when they... they um, announced who the winner was, and it wasn't me, I was very disappointed. <laughs> and... Next thing I know, they're announcing the Rookie of the Year, and it was me, and it was it was quite an honor. Um, nice job. So the award that I thought I was getting that year was the what they call the Good Neighbor Award, and I actually got that in 2021. Um, one of the committees that I, I, I had actually chaired at one point and I still sit on is called the Community Involvement and Investment Work Group. So we, do, we try to do a lot of things in the community and... We nominate organizations, nonprofits, um, twice a year for grants from the Massachusetts um, Association, and several organizations have have been awarded fifteen hundred dollar grants um, in the time that I've been there. So, um, and then in twenty twenty one, I was actually awarded the Good Neighbor Award at the state level, and oh, that goodness. was that was actually quite a surprise to me um i i went to the i went to the conference and was at the dinner and never expected that to happen but um again for you. it was quite an honor to to get that award at the state level good for you well it must be a great feeling to start a whole new career and get it up and going and then be recognized for all the great work you're doing so it, it really does and you know part of part of the one of the other reasons i wanted to get out of the corporate world and do something local was I felt like as much as I enjoyed my career um, being in corporate and traveling, I felt like I was not part of the community. And I really wanted to get back into that. And so being a local real estate agent um, really reconnected me with the community that I was born and raised in. Well, getting to know you as well as I have, you certainly have done that uh, both feet forward. I mean, you're involved in a lot of things, doing a lot of wonderful things for, for many people, and it's well appreciated and should be. Thank so you. good for you. So what, what, what would you say is the, um, what is the thing about your industry that, that makes you happiest about the real estate business? What, do you, what is it you enjoy the most, I should ask? I love working with first-time home buyers. Um, seeing someone... When, when you tell someone they, their offer got accepted on a home and they can own their own home for the first time, there isn't a better feeling. I had a couple that I was working with last year. And again, this was having my real estate license in New Hampshire is 
it helped them. They were working with an agent um, locally and just getting outbid, outbid, outbid. So the local agent asked if I, you know, would take the referral and try and help them find a home in New Hampshire. And we searched for quite a while, but they finally got the home. And it wasn't without complications and things, you know, going wrong, but we made it happen. And that was probably the best the best transaction I've had. Just seeing, because they were middle-aged folks, never owned a home, and I just can't express how, how, how great it felt well, to do that. Well, that's just great. And I think that's just a great story for why it is so important to work with a professional in whatever the, the situation is. Oh, this market today, if you're not working with a professional, if you're trying to get an offer accepted on a home, it's just not going to happen. Right. There's just so many different strategies you can use to get an offer accepted. It's not always about who's offering the most money. And I, and I tell my sellers that when I sit down and have a seller's cons consultation, I, I tell them, don't just look at what, what they're offering as far as the purchase price. There's just so much, so much more involved in it. Um, what kind of financing is it? How much are they putting down? You want to make sure that there's no risk in them not closing when when you think you're going to close, and there's many factors that could um, impact that. So, and again, um, it takes a professional to bring those things out because most of us would never get there. So that's terrific. I'm going to change the subject for just just a moment because I know um, that you are so passionate about so many things, and you're just so helpful to the community. But I know that one of your major passions is the Dana Farber. Correct. Can you tell us about that, please? I sure can. Um, so my late sister-in-law, Maureen Turcott, um, was diagnosed with a rare form of breast cancer in 2007. Uh, they had, her and my brother had two young sons at the time, and she was going to have to spend a lot of time at Dana-Farber, and they were trying to figure out child care, who's going to, you know, watch the kids when they get out of school on her treatment days, and it was a lot of chaos. So I just finally said, look, I will be the chemo partner. I will take you to every appointment there is. Um, and then my brother Jim could stay home and make sure when the boys got home from school that he was there. I, th I thought it was important that they had their dad home rather than Absolutely. some, sure. Sure. not stranger, but um, anyway, so I started going to Dana-Farber with her and I got very involved with her treatment as far as her oncologist. I still, I'm still in contact with him today. Um, every chemo appointment, um, doctor's appointment, scans, blood work, I was there with her. So I got to see firsthand how things were done at Dana-Farber, and it is total patient care. You go to the, your oncologist, and they schedule everything. You don't have to worry about, okay, I have a doctor's appointment, but I need to schedule chemo, and I need to do this, and I need this, exam this test. It's all coordinated for you. So um, her oncologist, Dr. Harold Burstein, I have a lot of respect for him. He tried everything he could to save her life. But I have to say, she was probably one of the most optimistic and brave people I've ever met. And she, she signed up to do clinical trials, knowing that it probably wouldn't save her life but it could possibly save lives of women in the future. And wow. they are using some of those drugs today to treat people, treat people with breast cancer. So it worked. Yeah. But yeah. unfortunately, um, it didn't save her. But so back in 2012, a friend of hers lost her young daughter to a neuroblastoma. So that was in August. So Maureen organized a team to do the Jimmy Fund walk. And within two weeks, the team um, raised about $16,000. So that was my first time doing the, the Jimmy Fund walk. Unfortunately, the next year, 2013, she passed away. So I stayed with the same team that she organized. And then the following year in 2014, I started my own team in her name. And since that time, our team has raised $138,000 oh, for Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. So our goal for this year is to get over 150. It was a bit challenging the last two years because of COVID. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do the big walk 
the walk is actually, they call it the Boston Marathon Jimmy Fund Walk because it does follow the Boston Marathon route. And there are four different routes you can take. You can do the whole 26-2, you can do 13-1, and then they have a 10K and a 5K. So the last two years, what we actually did was um, we did a local walk. So I had it set up at the Keller Williams office at Cumming Center, and we started and ended. We did a 5K. So we were still able to raise significant money, not as much as we typically would, but I was really surprised at um, the amount of money we were able to raise in that period of time. And every little bit helps, right? It doesn't uh, anything, matter if the amount is. I mean, sure, sure. we typically would raise about 25000 a year. I think one of the years we raised a little over ten, and the next year it was probably around twelve, twelve thousand. So that's amazing, considering mm -hmm. we were in COVID. So right, right. And you know, people are hurting. People were unemployed, and everybody was looking for help. Sure. So sure. Yeah, well, it's really sad what happened to your sister-in-law, but it's wonderful you were able to be, to be there for the family and to help. And and by extension, you've got so much more involved in Dana Farm. It's become kind of her legacy and your legacy. Exactly. I yeah. wanted to. I want to make sure that she is never forgotten. Every opportunity I get to say her name and to say what what she went through, I'm going to take it. So. Yeah. And can I just ask? I don't want to interrupt for just a second. How is your brother and the kids doing now? They're doing they're doing well. I mean, it was it was tough. Sure. Um, but my my older nephew um, just got back from uh, the Middle East. He is an army reservist, and he actually volunteered last year to go to the Middle East. Wow. And it couldn't have been at a worse time because right. he got deployed in July, and you know what happened then with everything that was going on in Afghanistan. Um, so we're just thankful to have him home. Well, you thank him from, from us uh, for his service, please. Yes, I will. Yep. That's my nephew, Dylan Turcott. That's awesome. Well, Good. kudos to Dylan. Hey, we're going to talk about Rotary in a minute. We already kind of touched on Dana-Farber, but you're a busy lady. I know you're involved in other boards and activities. Just give our, our viewers at home a chance to understand some of the other activities that keep you busy these days. So one of the things I did when I first got into real estate was uh, I joined the Greater Beverly Chamber. I just figured what better way to get to know people, network, um, and that was probably one of the best decisions I made. Um, I wasn't very active the first few years, but um, as I got to know people, I got more and more involved. And this year, I'm actually co-chairing the Power of, Power of Women series with uh, Melissa McLaughlin. Phenomenal. We just, we just had our first event last week. Al was there. It was the um, Trailblazer panel. with uh, We had four amazing women, and Karen um, Nash and Benny from the uh, music theater was the moderator. We actually had it at the music theater. Karen's amazing. I mean, she, is amazing. she just does such a phenomenal job. But the women we had on that panel were just incredible. Um, and what we didn't know when we had asked each of the, the women to be a panelist was they all work with their husbands. It was, it was amazing. But um, so I really enjoy being involved with the chamber. Um, what else do I do? Oh, I, I help, I volunteer when I can and donate to the Ella Square Friends. Ella Square Friends is a grassroots organization in Beverly. My friend Brenda Matos um, started it, I want to say, probably six years ago. And it came out of a Facebook post that um, people were saying negative things about the homeless downtown. And she made it her mission to help these people out. And um, it's been quite challenging with COVID. And they've had to pivot. And they can't serve meals at the church. Um, so they're doing to-go meals, and in addition to having the cost of everything increasing significantly, um, their numbers have increased, the number of people that they're serving. It's gone from an average of 40 to 50 people to almost 100 people a week now. Sad. So. Well, you've got a lot of interest in areas you're involved in, so so good for you. It sounds like it keeps keeps life busy. I try. <laughs> yeah, well, good for you. Hey, let's just finish off by talking a little bit about Rotary. Obviously, this is the Beverly Rotary TV show, and tell us a little bit about how you were involved, how you got involved in Rotary, who kind of brought you in, and how did you learn about it, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm fairly new to Rotary. Um, Sean Gaudreau, uh, he's one of the lenders. He's a friend of mine. He's also a lender that I work with. Sean asked me to attend a meeting and. 
I, I really enjoyed that first meeting, so I attended a couple of more and um, ended up getting inducted in February. The funny thing was, the day of the induction, I was on my way to um, to uh, the Keller Williams conference, so I was on by Zoom, and I was on the Logan Express bus <laughs> going to the airport. So unfortunately, I wasn't there in person, but. Um, the thing that attracted me to Rotary is the fact that it's a service organization, and it's just another way that I can help and give back to the community. So um, as a new Rotarian, um, you do a service project, and my project I'm going to be doing next week, and it's to help Ella Square friends, and we're doing bagged lunches. So I'll get all the supplies, and hopefully I'll get three or four of my fellow Rotarians to help me um, do an assembly line and put the bags together. Oh, and my niece, Nicole, is the director of Mrs. A's um, preschool, and the students at the school are decorating the bags for us. So, so that would include my twin granddaughters. Yes, it, yes, it would. It Absolutely. Yeah, yeah yes. that, is, that is perfect. Well, Linda, I, you know, I, I don't think I can thank you enough. Uh, you have been a, a, just a tremendous guest with us today. And I, in addition to thanking you for joining us, I also want to thank you for your community work. You obviously have a heart of gold, and you clearly share that with so many people who are in so much need. So thank you for all of that. Thank you for sharing the story about your sister-in-law. And we are so sorry to hear all of that. But what well, comes out of sometimes something that's so bad come something good. And that's exactly what you've made this. Uh, and nobody will forget her because of that. And I, again, want to send our thank you to your, to your nephew for his service. And, um, and thank you for being a Rotarian because you're a great asset to the club. Okay. Now, for anybody who's watching us right now okay. that, that might be interested in a piece of real estate and might be interested in making an offer or just getting some guidance and some advice, how would they get in touch with you? They could reach me um, by text or calling me at 978 978- 884-5740 or they can email me at lturcott at kw.com or they can visit my website which is turcotthomes.com and turcott is t-u-r-c-o-t-t-e correct turcotthomes.com correct well thank you again linda for joining us mike always a pleasure to work with you my friend and thank you for, nice for tuning thank in you. and keep your eyes on the beverly rotary club we're doing so many great things in the community and certainly would appreciate any support you want to give. Thank you again.